is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome to Friday Night Primetime. This season, we'll be hitting the Formula Renault 3.5. And today, the kickoff of the season will be at Zolder Circuit. So today's weather conditions, we got 18 degrees C for our ambient temperature, 51% for the humidity, partly cloudy skies, and a breeze about seven kilometers an hour. So it shouldn't be too much of an impact on the cars today. Overall track temperature looking about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that should be a very cool track with means plenty of grip out there. As we look into qualifying, Riku Alato is sitting at the top of the boards with a 108 394. And this is very interesting with these particular cars because Everybody's only had about a week to shake them down. They're brand new to the service and everybody's been excited to get into them. So first off on the grid, we got Riku Alato and Joni Heikinen on your front row, both finish drivers, then Victor Pritro and Josh Ladd rounding out your second row. Starting fifth is Samuel Lambert, then Johan Harth, who we've seen run the IMSA series last season. David Jarvis in 7th, and 8th is Ville Lepla. I think I said that right. Uh, Juka Salakin is 9th, 10th is Julian Alfred, 11th is Matteo Calastini, and 12th is Petri Colossa, 13th Joel Glees, 14th Antil Lubosca, Adrien Klemich, I think I said that right, and 16th is David Deloitte. 17th is Stefan Hatterman, 18th Antonio Oris Previdia, 19th is Tim Graven, and 20th is Tim McKeever. 21st is Scott Mitchire, 22nd Kazuki Omishia, 23rd is Matu Puremi, I think I said that close, uh, 24th is Fernando Guerrero. And that rounds out your whole grid. Starting, standing start today. And we look forward to uh, watching these things launch for the very first time this season. Just the tension in the air. Now the biggest thing that's unconcerned here is the tight chicanes first time through before these Michelins get up to temperature. But we'll see what happens and they're off. And we are underway with Formula 3.5 for 2019 season one. Here we go through turn one. It looks mostly clean going into turn two. It looks like we got three wide. Everybody's starting to funnel back down to two by two. The leaders have quickly gone down single file, and that is what you want to do very quickly here. Oh, and we got a spin in the first chicane. It sneaks up fast, and those Michelin tires that they are not at the temperature. Oh, and another one. Several cars having trouble at their first chicane. It looks like that's Aurin Glimmix that's already off and lost all the positions. Going to fall all the way to the back of the field, losing nine positions through that. That is not the way you want to start off your season. But if we look back up to the front of the field, it looks like we got challenges all 
double way. Side by side in turn one. And it looks like Heineken's got it. Heineken is just sitting right there behind. It's a really close race here. I mean, just everybody's still new to the car. And Zolder is definitely a track where you got to stay on your toes and you can't miss your braking points as we saw very early on. Drivers really struggling that first can on the cold tires. Right along here with Felipe Lapa in sixth. Looks like he's looking at the left. Not going to make it to a slowdown. Wait for a better spot, but looks like he's got the pace it's just a matter of finding the right timing and it's definitely holding in here david jarvis definitely does not seem to have the position right now as there he goes side by side in turn one and jarvis gives it up See, just staying single file is predominantly here until somebody goes to make a move, but a lot of it is mistake oriented, is what we're seeing very early on. I mean, the big thing here, the Zolder I mentioned earlier on, is it's all about the breaking points here. Turn some laps earlier today, just getting a feel for it. Whoa, and speaking of which, Tim Graven just goes around. That is biting him again. Oh, a little too early on the throttle. These things do have more power than the 2.0 that we've had on the service for a little while now. So putting that power, all, the pedal all the way down with the tires dirty is not ideal. Now this is the alternate layout as you saw they went through the old school turn instead of having the final chicane there. So it means that they're a lot faster in the straight and a lot faster into turn one which in many ways opens up that passing opportunity that we've seen a few times already this race. Jarvis definitely does not seem to be letting Lapar get away. He is staying right there and kind of learning from his competitor here. Very good through the chicane, minimal speed loss that's going to help him close up that gap little by little. Oh, big gain there on the brakes. A little bit of a lockup, but yeah. there it is. There it is. It's all about the braking into these really tight chicanes because they're so... Oh! And there's the mistake. Lapod just cost him the position by running into the grass. Let's look at that on replay. So here we go. We just finished the type, and he just gets a little too far to the inside, catches the grass, and it just completely upset the car, costing the position almost instantaneously. But a very good save. Keep the car under control. So let's go back to live. Ooh, and David Jarvis just like he had a real close one. And he might actually have bigger problems than that. Let's take a look at that. All right, so it goes through the final couple of spins there. Everything looks good going on to the front straight. Must have lost it somewhere in turn one. Oh, on the curb, just a little bit. Oh, and there it is. There's the contact between Lepa and Jarvis. It's been getting intense, but it doesn't look like... He might have some suspension damage because it looked like he was pulling a little bit to the left there at the end. So everybody's got to be really careful. I mean, that's the thing with open wheel racing. Last season we had the IMSA series and I mean, those are closed wheel cars. You really kind of get up on each other, do a little beating and banging and you can get away with some of it. But with these open wheelers, especially around the tires, I mean, everything is a lot more sensitive to impact. and you definitely do not want to make contact wheel to wheel that it will could easily cause damage that can ruin your
race, but I think we just saw that they were drivers. So we're looking here at the battle for seventh, which is between Petri Korova and Julian Alfred. I mean, if I'm saying any of these names wrong, please bear with me. A lot of them are new to me. Jake Sperry has just joined us. Hey, Jake. Yes, certainly have here. We've got side-by-side -side action. Petri Kutavara then trying to hold off Julian O'Frey, who has struggled over the last couple of laps, but a good defense by Kutavara into the Telemann complex, and that would be enough to hold the position. Apologies for my lateness. Ladies and gentlemen, O'Frey looking at the Boulderberg, trying to think about a move back. Now into the mix is Yuka Savalainen in this battle for 7th, 8th, and ninth in the field. Your leader at the moment, Ricky Atulu, Riku Alatalo, who has this one by 1.2 seconds over Yoni Heiken and a couple of drivers on pit road at the moment. Samuel Liber, Aurelian Gimelvic is one lap down and David Jarvis as well. But, Mr Burbage, we have ourselves some very, very good racing, some drivers up and down the field making positions, but crucially, it is the battle in the middle of the pack we focus on. Vile Lepala, Peter Victor Tavares, Julian O'Frey and Jupiter Savalainen all out there in a four-car scrap for sixth position. Yeah, sixth place has definitely been a center of action, especially from the start. I don't know if you caught it before you made it in, but there was... Um, People getting a little close and catching on the grass is really upsetting these uh, Formula Renault 3.5s. It certainly has done, of course, this track a very tight and a very narrow circuit at that as well. Overtaking is sometimes at a premium, especially with those anti-cut curbs that are so famous here around this Zolder track. Anti Leviska in the back of the 11th position, trying to get past Matteo Calastani in the University is the first. Positive Sim Racing number five machine. Number five indicating he is the fifth best driver when it comes to his I rating score. Of course, not using the final chicane proper. It is uh, a shortened version, a quicker version of that final chicane. That makes the final section incredibly difficult as an overtaking opportunity. And a lot of drivers have to be wary about that. Oh, we have a spin. That's Frey, who has gone around at turn number one. We saw uh, Juca Savaline and Danny inside and just too aggressive there, Stephen, trying to put his power down on the exit and as such it has cost him a multitude of positions yeah i think drivers are really struggling with the, uh, the additional power of the 3.5 when they're coming from the uh, 2.0 and there they are those anti -cut curves you were talking about earlier just caught it wrong seems like just a combination of just bad things it was a combination of things that weren't quite all together but he is able to keep himself going and continuing forward. He does the Frenchman's oh. Kazuki Mishima goes around right in front of the leader, and that will be pretty much day done for Kazuki Gun in the Radicals Online car, and he will bow out, not having any comfortability with the vehicle. Leviska, though, still behind Kalastani, heading through the final section, heavy over the first part of the chicane, but look at the run he's going to pick up towards turn number one. First call as it's known and on the brakes is able to really get the run that was needed and position plus one for anti Leviska and now Kalastani and the hands here at Steven of David Dendolo. Yeah, I mean the, the battle here, Dendolo's looking. But I mean again, like we were speaking earlier, it's all about consistency, it's about not making mistakes. And we just saw the mistake there Dendolo made and he just cost him another spot. Did, and that was the Bushfink machine of Tim Greven making his way through and all of a sudden Stefan Herman wants to get in on the mix in towards Tulane and wants to make one mistake around here. Once you lose one position, two or three do tend to follow pretty quickly afterwards. So drivers will have to be nursing their way around the track a little bit at a time in this 25 lap event. Petri Cotavara though looking at sixth position as an option trying to get past the number 20 of Vile Lepala as Lepala now gets under pressure fully committed in the toe and that is Kotovara comfortably making his way through the draft factor in these 3.5s a lot stronger than you'd find here Stephen on other vehicles yeah and I mean the draft is is one of those things you don't want to fall out of this is you know outside of the, the slow chicanes you've got a lot several high speed sections of course, that draft will play key, and I think you hit on a very important part there. 
certainly has been important for the middle of the pack to attempt their overtaking. The top four, uh, top five even, all on roads of their own. It's Alitalo who leads, Johnny Heikinen in second. It's Victor Preto, the champs iRacing in third. Josh Ladd in fourth position with Johan Haaf in position number five. It is race clutch four and five at the moment in this event. But this is about trying to get some momentum going. This is the first primetime broadcast of the season, the first race that we've actually seen these 3.5s get fully into action. This is going to be a test which a lot of drivers now are trying to work out. How do I use this car as Savalainen looks down the inside at turn number one in the number four car, unable to make it happen as he makes his way to observatory bend. Stephen, this is the first chance where you have to ask, am I quick enough? Do we have the setup that works? We've had week 13 to work on things, but really one week does not set the trend for an entire car. No, it doesn't, and it definitely doesn't set a trend for the season. I mean, one week shakedown is, is a very small amount of time compared to what these drivers are used to having for a Friday night primetime event. So seeing who can adapt to this new chassis the quickest and learn it and you know, it's uh, subtleties. I think we'll really see over the next couple of weeks. Certainly will. Vile Lepela has not gone away from Cotavara, and Cotavara is under pressure heading to Boulderberg. I thought about going down to the inside, turns to absolutely nothing at Boulderberg, and now the setup towards turn oh. number one needs to be the place as Sava line and behind has a huge moment and costs himself a lot of time. Again, trying to deal with that power, which is not there in comparison to the Formula Renault 2.0, and it bit back. And that, that slow hairpin, it's, you know, you gotta be careful. Oh, and he locked it up a little bit, so he definitely jabbed on the brakes to bring the nose back in line. That he did. Now we've got side by side behind as Matteo Calastani tries to hold off Tim Grevin around the outside Woo! of Observatory Bend. And I tell you what, Calastani made himself tougher than a $2 stake to make that move, but that means nothing. Uh -oh. All of a sudden, picks up scraps is David Dendolo trying to find himself a way through at the Klein Chicane now. This fantastic left right, you cannot go too wide here. And yielding those positive sim racing. Now Stefan Herman is the next who wants to get through, and just like that, one two almost three positions going in the space of half a lap yeah i mean these chicanes I mean, if you are not on that line you just lose so much momentum and it just makes you a sitting duck to whoever's coming from behind it certainly does and a lot of drivers had to be careful and they now know how much they have to manage we are over the halfway stage in this opening race on Friday night prime time. The only series that has been voted for by you, the fans here at Racebook TV as we stream on the Iris Esports Network. Greven under pressure. Here comes Davy Dendelo going to the outside to try and make it at turn number one. Unable to put the power down on the exit. Was very respectful and gave a lot of room and through observatory and then into the canal corner and Lucian Bianchi Bend. There's not really much help that David Dendelo is going to help in order to make this move. Train though from Cotavara backwards has a new member in it and that is Joel Guez who has found his way past Antti Lavoska and Joel Guez all of a sudden is looking at Savaline and thinking okay let's just stay patient here because chances could happen. Yeah I mean we've seen it all race Jake I mean chances are there and a lot of it has to do with just people getting a little too greedy on the corner uh corner apex and corner exit getting onto those no cut curves or getting a little bit to the grass or the gravel and just losing it just a little bit costing them all that momentum and time it's a fantastic lap by Yoni Heikinen on lap 13 he did have an off track instant point it won't count as his fastest lap but a 109.087 that was enough to take two tenths of a second off of Riku Alitalo in the Glacier racing car in front gap down 1.3 seconds at the front of the field and Heikinen who had himself some fantastic results in 2017 and into 2018 he has had a good season by his standards as well he's trying to chase down someone who has been a staple of IRS and for a number of years a former world championship license holder someone who has had insane speed going back all the 
way to 2011-2012 in open wheel formulas in Riku Alitalo. This is going to be a tough challenge to reel this down because Alitalo certainly hasn't lost any of his skill here today, Steve. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's really important to notice is when drivers maintain their skill set over a period of time. Oh, and it looks like Matteo Castini just went off into the gravel. Yeah, that's Kalistani, who was struggling in the positive sim racing uh, machine. The university is about the first positive sim racing machine. That was through the Tulaman complex. Second part of the chicane. Oh, he got heavy over the curves. It unsettled the rear of the vehicle. And just like that, no traction, no grip. And Kalistani's going for a ride. He's now behind the one lap down, Aurelian Gimovic, which will put him into 16th or 15th position, sorry, out on circuit. So that's not ideal. Angela Bosk has found his way back through on Joel Gued. So that's been a change of position that we have kept an eye out on. But Alitalo over that last lap just set the fastest lap of the day. A 109.057. He responded magnificently to Heikkinen. Yeah, I mean, man, just the, the battles are just impressive today. You know, one thing in you know, Jake that you always, we always hear a lot with uh, open wheelers is so it's a lot more follow the leaders, what people are accustomed to, and this Formula 3.5 really has been putting on a lot of side-by-side -side action today and a very tight technical circuit. Well, it certainly hasn't been follow the leader for this fantastic series that has made its way over to iRacing along with the Dallara F3 and how that has changed the shape of how sim racing looks at itself on the open wheel side of iRacing. But this is going to be a vehicle which a lot of drivers will want to have a good challenge in and a push at trying to master as they climb the ladder of sim racing for the foreseeable future. Got good little battles still going on as Cotavara holding off Lepola, Savalainen, Lavoska and Guez have dropped backwards though outside of that range and really is a case of if you are not within half a second over the course of the lap there isn't really an opportunity to go and make these moves as Lepola trying to follow in the middle of the lap and not quite finding much at the moment but keep an eye on Riku Alitalo because that gap has come down by seven tenths of a second over the course of that last lap and that's not ideal at all and it looks like he's got some damage may have damage I don't see any damage on his vehicle but he certainly may have damage potentially for that glacier racing car and now Heikkinen gets the first chance he's had in a very long time to 67 in the speed track hitting on the brakes it's probably underneath the vehicle that Alitalo now has got to deal with it those curves incredibly high here Stephen and it's so easy to pick up damage especially to the floor of these sorts of cars yeah, I mean, any kind of open wheel for the most part, I mean, you don't want to damage the iron body. It can cause, just destroys the, the aerodynamics of the ride of the car. And I think you're right there on the point there, Jay. And that might be what Alan Cutler's got going on uh, with his car and with where he's struggling. Certainly may be the case. Look at the overspeed that Heikkinen has. Hard to the inside. Alitalo left only one line to go through, but he's not giving up. Around the outside, he'll try at first corner. He now needs to try and look at observatory, but he is impervious to the challenge of Yoni Heikkinen. Heikkinen fantastically goes down the inside and takes the race lead away from Riku Alitalo. Heikkinen Whoa. now has himself in the great places now. Heikkinen has himself uh, a good breakaway because that's Alitalo making a mistake. Yeah, Alitalo ran way too wide. And, uh, something I mentioned earlier is like, you know, drivers taking too much liberty with that exit and costing him time. And we saw that with Alitalo, who just carried way too much speed on the exit. Four tires in the gravel, that's not going to do him any favors. No, it's certainly not. And when you ever get yourself into mistakes, what's one mistake's happened, two and three do tend to follow. The race clutch cars, though, are coming together. Johan Hart and Josh Ladd. 
both together on circuit, so they will have themselves a little bit of an easier battle of things. But because they are having this scrap together, there is pride between the drivers who wants to be considered the better driver. Johan Haaf, the Iris and Rallycross Series pro driver, he needs to find a way past Josh Ladd, and he certainly has the pace available to him to try and close that gap under a second. Yeah, I mean, teammate battles have always been really fun to watch, and it differs from team to team, but I think in this case, we're not going to see team orders. This is really much uh, teammates seeing who can throw the gauntlet down and who's really got the pace adjusting this brand new car. And this brand new car has been adjusting towards pace for a lot of drivers up and down the field. Antonio Ortiz, for example, in the 23. Can he stop Julian O'Frey from making a move around the outside as they battle just in front as David Dendelo and Stefan Herman decide to change positions? O'Frey down the inside at observatory. Does he have enough room? Not enough power on the exit. Ortiz can run the outside line and hold on to position. Also battles a little bit further down like Tim McIver against Fernando Guerrero. This is for the 18th and 19th position. Shows you just how competitive this field is. They're battling up and down the order. Yeah, I mean, competitive is definitely the proper word for this race. I mean, strength of field is over 5,000. So we're not dealing with, uh, we're definitely dealing with a high caliber driver here today, Jay. We certainly are dealing with a high caliber of driver and Alitalo's got to be careful because Victor Preto did a 109.5, Alitalo's 110 flat after second taking off in that last lap with six laps remaining here in Belgium in Zolder because now that gap, 4.3 seconds, if Alitalo starts slipping, this one could all change just like that. So that's just something to keep an eye out on for the final stages of this event. Vile Lepala still has been unable to close down Petri Kotovara who has just kept him at bay at every point in this event. The gap three and a half tenths of a second the last time they crossed the start finish line. I think Lepela is just biding his time for one last move. Yeah, Lepela's got to be careful though. I mean, he's made mistakes earlier on the race. Look where he got here, Jake. And, you know, he had this back and forth going on and I believe it was with the goals in the beginning and you know, it, they got to make sure that when he's putting on the pressure, he doesn't overdrive the car because it has plagued him earlier on. It certainly has done. He's got to be careful. Look at Josh Ladd, though, the battle for fourth position because here comes Johan Haaf down to the inside to try and make that happen. And, oh, he tried to turn in, did Josh Ladd, but he had to suddenly back out of it because Haaf was right down the inside. And just like that, Johan Haaf up into fourth position now in this event. Prato's gap comes down to 3.7 seconds and this gap's looking close. Look at Lepela though. Around the outside he'll try of Petri Kotovara observatory bend. He's had enough of waiting. Next two corners, this one at Canal and the one afterwards here at Lucian Bianchi only favour the driver of oh. Man, that was close. It was close. You're absolutely right, Kota Bar. Oh, here it goes again. He'll come straight back trying to find that move, but he won't be able to. This has brought Savalainen in. This has brought Lavoska in, and all of a sudden, four Finns are having a fight. <laughs> and no one's going to be calling. Oh! Just a snap on the brakes for Savalainen, and that will jump him straight out of the scenes, along with Lavoska, who struggles on the power as well. Just like that, a train of four becomes a train of two, and that tells you just how difficult sometimes the dirty air can be. Oh, not just that, but, I mean, these cars, yeah, they're very, very touchy with the brakes. I was turning some last before the session just to get a feel for it, and that is the what can get hard on the brakes. It's so easy to lock them up. So he's locked them up. Josh Ladd, though, is not done with Johan Haaf for fourth position. He tried fighting back against the Frenchman, but found nothing in response, being able to make that move. Another four tenths for Victor Preto in third position. Gap down to 3.3. Four laps, now three and a half. Left to go here at Zolda. Josh Ladd left with not much here into the Tulemon complex. It's four corner, fantastic. Uh, left, right, left, and then a double right-hander to get back onto the pace. Not much being able to be done just yet, but there are drivers now starting to wait as O'Frey needs to find a way past Ortiz. They both have found David Dendelo through the chicane, and Ortiz has an opportunity. And an 
opportunity. They've been really showing up a lot today, so take advantage of what you can. Uh, on screen, though, I mean, look at the gap between these race clutch cars. They've really tightened up over the last few laps. They have done, but that gap has extended over that lap by six tenths of a second, so Half has had the ability to just pull away ever so slightly. Dendolo still under pressure with Ortiz being the sandwich with Julian O'Frey just behind, thinking about how he's going to try and find two more positions after his moment. Dendolo sitting duck, moves to the outside then to defend this one as now Ortiz straight down the inside and takes the position very comfortably away there. That's another position gain. Look at Victor Preto though, a second wiped off in that last lap. Gap down to two and a half seconds and Alitalo is hoping beyond hope that he can just limp and nurse the car home. It's two at the flag. And it, limping the car home is not what you want to hear when you got someone closing in on you quickly. I mean, that's just going to add a whole other level of pressure that can create an opening here for Petro. Exactly. Thinking about a move at the Tulayman Complex. He can't find it. That's not ideal. Alitalo, 110 flat. Another four tenths from Victor Prato. The champ's iRacing car. Two seconds, two laps. Can he find the magic formula to close down a second, a lap to get things going? We have seen another oh. retirement. That's Fernando Guerrero, who is Julian out Affleck on just through. As O'Frey has lost it. You're absolutely right. He's trying to find a way past Davi Dendolo, and he just can't find it because he could put the power down a little bit too early. Here comes the next chance then at turn number one here and down inside he thinks but he's not quite able. No, but you can really see that draft at work. He just sucked right up to him before he looked to the inside and he's not done yet. Not done yet at all, but there is not much time left for Yoni Heikkinen. The white flag will come out this time by one final lap here at Zolder. And for drivers like David Dendolo, for example, they've got two laps to try and play the ultimate defense card. A fray is so much quicker through that Klein chicane over Butte, almost banging wheels as he searches for the inside. Mistake oh. the tees in front and straight through will go Julian O'Frey just like that. Fantastic overtaking. Look back towards Alitalo though. He's got 1.7 seconds without a mistake. I think Prato is a little bit too far away in terms of that battle out on track. Your top five seem very much determined at this stage. It is O'Frey or Ortiz and Dendolo who have been the biggest movers in terms of this final lap battle but there's not much more that many drivers can do. To Lehman Complex then for Alitalo and Preto and it seems that Preto although he's tried to do everything it seems that there's not much more that he can argue with. Alitalo built up the gap early and has done enough to stave off this second position charge but to Yoni Heikkinen the 2017 Finnish Sim Racing Champion will head himself through the final chicane and prove his worth to everybody once again. Yoni Heikkinen wins here at Zolder and stamps his name down as the first live broadcast winner in the Formula Renault 3.5 official series. Great work from him. Alitalo second. Victor Preto will secure third place in the end. Still a few scraps though towards the end. O'Frey harassing the rear of Antonio Ortiz here, uh, Stephen. Well, Jake, that was... That was one way to kick off a season. Oh, you have to agree, a little bit wide from a certain Julian O'Frey as O'Frey now starts to think about making this move. Can he send one down here? Oh, he's going to do it, but he can't. He just can't. The gap was not there at that chicane. And O'Frey probably needed to wait for the run off of the corner to make the move. And as such, will not get the position that he was hoping to find. The last vehicle on the leading lap will be the 22 of Tim McIver, who will make his way to the final chicane and across the start-finish line. Let's get classified results then here from Zolder, and what a great race we've had. Yanni Heikinen then takes the victory by 7.8 seconds. He had to work hard for it, but it was damage that cost Alitalo in the end. He finishes second, holding off a challenge of Victor Preto, who finishes 1.2 seconds behind in third. Johan Haaf gets fourth position ahead of Josh Ladd, his own teammate, the French-based race clutch team, with Ville Lepela getting sick ahead of Petrico Tavara. 
Antti Les Leverska gets eighth position with Yuka Savalainen in ninth, exactly where he started. And Joel Guez, in his real timing, getting himself into the number 10 to position number 10. On the second page, there's Team Bushwick's Tim Grevin in 11th place. Stefan Herman with Antonio Ortiz. Julian Afray unable to get by him in 14th. David Dendolo having himself a day which was full of being overtaken with Matteo Calastark making a few mistakes for positive sim racing. Tim McIver, the last vehicle on the leading lap in 17th. Matthew Prudhomme, Scott McIntyre and Aurelian Gimelvitz finishing one lap down vehicles who failed to finish fernando guerrero radicals online's kazuki umashima carbon racing's jet david jarvis and ldlc samuel liber as well we're going to step aside though here on the iRacing esports network we'll come back to you with the post race show after this you're watching the iRacing or Racebot TV primetime for the iRacing formula renault 3.5 championship and it's here only on the iRacing Esports Network. is a virtue my dear boy and Yoni Haikinen knew that better than anybody else he may not have had the overall one lap pace to have said Riku Alatalo was quicker than me but he kept the pressure on and he saw the mistake from the legendary Finnish open wheel character and just like that he was able to get trumps and pick up the victory here this evening we're here on the post-race show, here on the Irish Esports Network, presented by Racebot TV. It's Shakespeare and Stephen Burbage here in the commentary booth. And just like that, the driver who came home in second position, Riku Alatalo, as he likes to call himself, Ricky Atulu. Rico, uh, a difficult race for you today. Yanni Haikinen pushed you all the way. Aside from a little bit of damage, surely you felt that victory was more than capable of being in your grasp. Oh yeah, definitely. It's it's really unfortunate that I've done like what fifteen races this week and I've never damaged my car. And then in the one race that has actually a decent field, I managed to, managed to do it just uh, an inch wide on the second curb on the chicane, and it broke my floor. And that was a second off pace. Nothing I could do. The car just didn't want to turn. So rather unfortunate. To, uh, wanted to battle with Johnny the whole race, and uh, I think I could have had the win without that. Well, it isn't a win, but you still managed to get yourself second position. So in terms of this Formula Renault 3.5, an intermediary between the Formula Renault 2.0 and the McLaren MP430, do you feel like this 3.5 has been a little bit easier to adjust to than some other vehicles? And do you think that uh, the balance in terms of drivers near the front has been seemingly fair over the first week? Uh, yeah, I think uh, everyone's getting used to the new car, obviously, and uh, the setups are being uh, modified and improved on over the time. And uh, I think 
uh, well, I found it very easy to jump into the car because I drove the Williams for a long time, and uh, it this is just a little bit less powered Williams, so it it was very easy for me. And of course, looking over to the next few weeks, of course, this championship, part of the iRacing Official Series Championship, you have to be looking after a second place finish here and looking at some very strong points in the big race split. You have to be starting to think, OK, maybe this is a car that I can potentially farm to look for a championship challenge. Uh, well, I've, I've done like 16 races this week already, so like my championship points are getting diluted due to the, to the championship system. But uh, I'm going to race this car as much as I can because I, I, like, I like it. I think it, it's my new favorite car and I love driving it. And it's been bringing me back to sim racing and not so much much of Counter-Strike anymore. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping this will be the Pro Series car coming this, uh, this spring. So hopefully it is and uh, I can join the Drivers World Championship again with this car. Well, we'll certainly hope to see you potentially in the future. Before we let you go, any shout-outs or sponsors? Uh, well, thanks to Klasir and thanks to the whole of Club uh, Finland people. Uh, we, me and Heikren did a lot of... Uh, we, we communicated quite a bit about our pace and our setup work. So thanks to Joni as well. No worries at all. Riku Alatalo getting second position overall. But Stephen... Final thoughts then as we take ourselves towards the end of proceedings here on the iRacing Esports Network. Well, Jake, I mean, my final thoughts here is we're really looking forward to this season. I mean, we've got the, the brand new Formula Renault 3.5. It's really put on a great show today. I expect to see more of this in the weeks to come. How about you? I'm certainly hoping to see a great, great challenge and some fantastic drivers to put themselves in. And let's not forget, there is probably about 30 others who would want to get themselves in as they go over to Leipzig to battle things out. But that's all we've got to have time for here today on Racebot TV, the Irising Esports Network. But to those who get it done for us, to Andwell and Designs, the official graphics partners here at Racebot TV, along with ATVO and Appgeneer, the official graphics engine. Animations presented to you by Simon Grossman, with live timing and scoring brought to you by Nick Thisson, and of course, cameras by Istvan Ballos, Track Cams 22. Make sure that you check those out. But that's not all we're going to have here on Race TV for the foreseeable future because we've got the new series of the Skip Barber 2K World Cup that will be taking place and we'll be looking to try and get into action. Make sure you check that out. There was a new champion last season which really did bring things together. Also, the Neo Endurance Series, six hours of Interlagos. That's going to be key. Join Cam Walsh and the gang for that one. But... And Stephen Burbage and Hugo Louise behind the camera. I am Jake Sperry saying that it's a great showing from Yoni Haikinen. The Finns are coming out in force, and this championship is going to be one hard fought right to the bitter end. See you around.